Welcome to this short overview of the Benko Gambit. And the motivation for making this is that um, one of the academies in South Africa organizes these thematic uh, uh, tournaments. And each week there's an opening that the kids need to play. So Chess Excellence sets up the tournament. I think it's Rapid Games. And uh, they choose uh, an opening. So I enjoy making like an overview videos of those openings. So this week's theme is the Benko Gambit. And I thought I'd give an overview of that. So the, the Benko is a very dynamic opening. Um, I really enjoy actually playing it for black. So it comes after D4, Knight F6, uh, C4, black goes C5, and white goes d5 and it starts here with this move b5 and after c takes b5 black goes here a6 and you've got the the starting position of the Benko gambit but before getting here there's various ways in which uh, Benko can be declined the whole idea behind the Benko is that, yes, black gives up a pawn, but let's say after this pawn takes a g6, knight c3, white is prepared to now push e4. Um, black goes here. The argument is that after this, um, b6, let's say g3, bishop g7, king d2, castles, and uh, say knight f3. White has got this, black has got these um, two files in which he will create some counterplay. The queen goes to, let's say, a5 or b6 or c7, depending on the scenario. And this knight goes to b7, this rook goes to b8. Black has got a lot of activity for the pawn. And this is really quite a valid compensation. So most people actually don't like experiencing this as white. So, they have figured different ways of trying to avoid the Benko. So we'll start with those so that you are familiar. So after d4, knight f6, uh, c4, c5, and d5, b5, uh, white can play a4 here. Just not a uh, taking the pawn, and it's an attempt to show that b5 is a bit premature. Uh, and at this point, a6 is no longer playable because of the pin on the a file, so you can't play a6. Now, black has to decide um, what to do with the b pawn. And here, taking on c4 makes sense. You don't give the rook the open file. Um, here, for something new, I would recommend B4 from some of the games that I've seen. This has scored nicely, maybe just because it's a new position. But also it denies the knight this square here, and this could be a different uh, game altogether. Um, but B takes C4 is the main knight here, and after knight C3, D6, E4, now is ready to collect on uh, C4, don't bother to protect, you just continue with G6. And it could be interesting, it probably is worth looking with a computer. What happens after bishop A6? This becomes some nice homework. But to stay true to the theme of the opening, just play G6 here. Bishop C4, Bishop G7, Knight to F3, Castle short, Castle short. Uh, knight b8 a6 um, just going for this square b4 and bishop to b5 and what is a tiny advantage nothing much to write home about but it's a game another idea here instead of a4 is that after d4 knight f6 c4 c5 d5 b5 um, white can play knight bd2 
and it's recently fashionable to play it like this and here black should take on c4 and there is an idea here of playing queen a5 trying to take advantage of the pin but white is a better position after e4 I takes e4 bishop d3 and white has a bit of pressure on black here i don't like this so i recommend a b takes c4 and after e4 you can if white decides to take on c4 instead of playing e4 after bishop b7 you notice that there's quite a lot of pressure on this pawn on d5 and and the only way to save it is to maybe play d6 here and this is not really comfortable for white because black completely controls the center so here yeah, that's why you find white playing e4 and so that if he's going to recover the pawn at least damage his structure c3 and pawn takes g6 knight to c4 d6 and uh, the reason why you don't want to take on e4 is that after you need to things can become very messy you can get checkmated if you're not careful let's say for instance you go here this is checkmate so it's not something you want to give white a chance on so it's best to just go d6 and after bishop d3 you go bishop g7 knight f3 castle short castle short and bishop a6 and the position is about equal uh, you are not worse off Another way that people kind of try to avoid the bank is after d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, b5, they call knight f3, just saying, listen, I don't want to take a pawn that I've not worked hard for to, to get. Um, and here, you go bishop b7, um, it's the most ambitious uh, because it applies pressure on d5. There's another way of playing here where you can go g6. And after king c2, bishop g7, e4. This looks quite promising for white. I really don't like it. So bishop b7 is something nice that you can stick to. And after queen c2, um this is the most popular choice uh, it prepares the move um, e4 um, without subsequent uh, consequences of the weakness of d5 but here black has scored quite quite nicely um, the best to play is take on c4 e4 and then e6 sorry just challenging um challenging the d pawn bishop c4 and take on d5 take on d5 and then bishop b7 take on d5 and after this this and castles The loss of the pawn is well compensated for, but this is a very uncomfortable position to play as black because you are behind in development. And it's worth looking again with the computer to see like, okay, how do I play against it? Or how does it play against me? This is really a kind of worth it. Having looked at that, let's return to um, the Benko. Proper after d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, 
uh, b5, take on b5, a6. Now, the move uh, e6 here. was used to be the normal move when this defense was called the Volga Gambit, like a, the Benko used to be called the Volga Gambit. In fact, in some countries, they still call it the Volga Gambit, but nowadays, most people just call it the Benko. Nowadays, it's rarely played, and the reason why it's not played like this is because of the following move sequence. After knight c3, uh, pawn takes on d5, uh, knight takes on d5, bishop here, e4, uh, white, is, white is the advantage. Um, it is, I think, um, one of the reasons why um, the move order changed. So, after d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, b5, c takes b5, people started playing a6 first. And there's various ways of responding. So let's start looking at them from the basic ones. One idea is to not take and play knight to c3. At this point, black should take on b5. And after e4, uh, white wishes to avoid this move e5 here. And it's a very sharp uh, line we're about to get into. So here is black, you just go b4, and here he is to save the knight. And they normally go knight to b5. And here, the knight is uh, aggressively posted on this b5 square. However, it has bent its bridges at the back here, and it's no longer has any retreat squares. You can see that d4, c3, a3 are all taken by the pawns. The tactical justification um, for this is that black, uh, if black captures on e4, um, after queen e2, he still has that idea which we spoke about, that he could checkmate, checkmate black. So black needs to be very careful. So after knight b5, uh, the main move is d6 here. Some of you might fall for this trap. So after d6, um, bishop f4, again, um, if you play a quick bishop c4 here, you run into this, and with the idea of playing the knight to b6, you're going to lose some tempo here. So you need to be careful. That's why this move, but here, black goes g5. This is the move that put this whole line into doubt. The idea is that um, black wants to take on e4, at the same time attacking the bishop on g5 if it takes this pawn. Um, taking on e4 is playable, but it's risky. So instead of g5, if, if he takes on e4 here, what um, white does is that he goes queen e2, and after g5, um, Bishop, take, bishop to e5, threatening the rook, just to mess up a black pawn structure. And after this, queen takes e4. And this is not looking good for black. So that's why here he starts with uh, g5. So after bishop takes g5, the move knight takes uh, e4 is now hitting on the bishop. And the bishop has to go here. And now queen a4 with threats like b3 coming, or queen f5, sorry. Bishop c4, uh, 
uh, in this position, playing queen e2 with the idea of knight d6 is no longer valid. After b3 check, um, king d1, um, this move queen a2 is very strong because we are threatening um, mate uh, potentially because when the bishop returns to defend, there's this bishop h6 coming through. So queen e2, not really valid. So after queen a5, bishop c4. And in this position, the rook, uh, the, the, the discovered check doesn't really do much because the rook and the bishop are protecting a2. So Black goes bishop g7, queen e2, a b3 check, and king f1, f7, f5, protecting the knight, f3, and here castle shot using the position of the king on f1. And the position is quite complex. Who stands better is not clear. However, over the board, uh, black should have better chances. So going back, after B A six, one of the lines here after G six is uh, sorry here instead of B A six, there is this line F three. Um, Maxim Bluji, I think, came up with this move. And it's been popular since the 80s. And it's one of the most aggressive plans that a white chance. actually remember the national champion played this against me at the rapid in at Porus. Uh, the plan is to play e4 here and take position of the center. The drawback though is you can see that the dark squares around the king are very weak. So here, yeah, you should play e6. Uh, the normal move g6 here allows white to gain uh, an edge. If you play g6 here, um, white could gain, gain an edge with e4. And after d6, knight a3, bishop g7, knight e2, castles. Knight c3. Um, whereas if black decides, let's say, to capture the pawn after f3, so let's go back here. After f3, if he decides to take the b pawn, after e4, queen check, bishop d2, d4, knight to a3. Taking advantage of the pin, d6, knight c4, queen d8, bishop d3. And here, yeah, white is much better fluid game, and black is a bit behind in development. This is not really a pleasant position. That's why e6 is the chosen uh, continuation here. And after e4, you take on, on d5. And you are not giving a white a time and room to breathe. And here, this uh, the best way to kind of try and punish this is to play e5. And here you go queen e7. And after queen e2, you have to kill all knight because there's no good square. And after knight c3, bishop goes to b7. Knight goes to h3, c4. It's a bit of a non-standard position. It's not normal. And after knight f4, um, this is much sharper than continuing with bishop e3. Uh, take on b5. Uh, the point is that if you take with the knight, he comes with this check and you have to retreat the knight. 
and here castles long queen b4 and black's position holds so knight h4 knight f4 is a try and and here you go to c5 to protect d5 and also potentially take on b5 and for a long time this was considered to be good for black but then the following move kind of upset the whole idea and assessment of these positions after knight d5 um, bishop takes should be three. It's a deflection. So the bishop, the queen has got no good spirit to keep an eye on the bishop, but you could play this one, pinning the knight. So for a moment, the knight cannot attack. Uh, but white has got this move a3, which is the second deflection. And now you go queen a5 to keep the pin. And after bishop d2. The bishop is now under root threat. And here what you do is you go bishop e6, uh, removing the bishop as a target. So after knight d5, it's covered attack on the queen, queen d8, uh, queen c4. Now he's threatening knight c7 check. Okay, so here, you play rook a7 and after rook a c1 in exchange for his piece white is a uh, two pawns a lead in development and an initiative though he may not have an objective advantage uh, he certainly has an easier position to play this is for those willing to go into these complicated and risky continuations but it shows you how rich this opening is there is another trend that I've started noticing. Again, on the fifth move, instead of f3 here, people play e3. So, this um, is a quiet approach. White controls the b5 square. And without committing himself to an overly advanced uh, pawn center, which will be subject to counter-attack, as you have seen in many of these lines. So after e3, g6, uh, black usually chooses this move in the Benko. If you want an ambitious try here, you can try a b5. And after bishop b5, continue with check. And after knight c3, Bishop b7, putting pressure on d5, and knight e2. Yeah, this is a sacrifice of the d5, d5 pawn. After knight d5, castles, knight c3, knight c3, e6, e4, uh, bishop e7, bishop f4. And white is a little bit, a little bit better, but I can tell you right now, if you are <laughs> playing black, it's worth trying. People don't handle these positions well. Some of this analysis is found through computers, and the computer can play this position accurately. A human, no. So I would maybe err on the side of being plus a pawn and play this position as is. But anyway, going to after e3, g6, this is the most common human move. After knight c3, bishop g7, a4, castles short, knight f3, uh, bishop b7. So here, black is aiming for a breakthrough with e6. Let's say um, after rook a3, a takes b5 and after bishop takes b5 it goes e6 and after d e6 because you can maintain that pawn you go f7 e6 okay black goes queen b6 i mean white 
attacking C5. But what is really stopping black from is taking over the center with D5. So here, Queen C8, castle short, we play Knight E8 here. We eject the Queen from this strong square, Queen G3, Bishop takes F3. And we can't take with the Queen because of the Rook, GF3, Knight C6. And it's not easy to judge this position, but it's quite playable for both sides. I prefer black, and that's because it's got a lot of attacking uh, potential with these minor pieces, whereas uh, white's minor pieces are a bit held back. Now, on the fifth move again, um, Instead of these quiet moves, or, I mean, another one of these quiet moves is not e3 but b6 here. Just avoiding to take the pawn. Uh, this move in the 90s, uh, Shirov managed to to make uh, this line um, the most promising weapon for white against black. It's it's like white could be a pawn up and then uh, he gives back this pawn. But at the same time, by not opening up lines, black doesn't have the usual compensation that he normally has in this opening. So there's various ways that uh, black could deal with it. One is to take with the queen. Uh, another one is to continue with d6. Another one is to continue with uh, e6. Uh, the most ambitious one is to continue with e6. Uh, but the one I really enjoy is the one where you play d6 here. And the point is that after knight c3, you're trying to recover this pawn with the knight. So what you do is you go knight d7, and they normally go a4. And this is the reason I think why it's not so popular because of this move. And here, yeah, Black has to play a5, but this gives white the square b5. And after e4, he goes g6. And after knight f3, bishop g7. After bishop b5, castle short, castle short. And black recovers this pawn with knight b6, h3. And white has an edge in this position, but it's quite playable. So this uh, would be kind of like the recommendation I have for this particular line. And then having looked at all this, we now go to kind of like the Benko main line. And um, after d4, knight f6, c5, e5, take a6. And here you take on um, a6. And here this these arguments about what's the best way to continue. And the simplest is just to take the pawn. Yes, you're going to take the pawn anyway. But some people think that you must play g6 here. Just in case white plans to play like this. Then you have this choice after castles, bishop g2, to take with the knight and put the bishop on b7. That's really the main difference. If the opponents you are playing, this is a critical element, then you might need to look at the nuances of why that is better. But here I'm just recommending that just take the pawn immediately and um, after bishop a6, knight c3, Um, okay, let's go back a little bit. So d4, knight f6, c4, c5, d5, and you go b5, take on b5, and you go a6, take on a6, and 
you take here. Bishop takes a6. Okay. After knight c3, white can also try and fianchetto uh, b3 here, but this is not very ambitious. You just go g6, bishop b2, bishop g7. And then he continues with this g3, castles, knight h3, sorry, knight h3, knight b d7, okay, I see, so I, s I left out a move here, after bishop g7, g3, and d6, and bishop g2, sorry for that, castles, and then knight h3, so that you don't block the bishop, knight b d7, uh, castles, rook a7, and here, black is the idea of playing queen a8, and bring the other rook to b8, and put pressure on these files, typical of a Benko setup. But going back, knight c3, this is the main line, and here black goes d6. Okay, so here this is where you really can fight under Benko structure conditions, and there's various ideas for white here. White will play this f4 plan. This is a very aggressive plan, and white wishes to occupy the center with e4 and then e5, and here, black just continues with g6. And after knight f3, bishop g7. And then now he goes e4. So the point is that now, if black takes on f1, uh, white can take with the rook. Normally, you cannot do this. Uh, because uh, if you play a quick e4, you have to take with the king. So castle is short. And now... White continues with e5. It's more prudent maybe to play king f2 and tuck your king to g1. But okay, h2 is on. So after e5, knight goes to e8. The continuation of taking on e5 here just helps white. Um, I don't know why anyone would want to get into a position like this. White seems to be okay here. So that's why after this, just continue with knight e8 and after king f2, knight b7, threatening e5, queen e2. And the position is not clear who's better, but um, again, you're looking for positions with chances, and this might be something worth looking at. So, instead of f4, another idea for black here is, for white, I mean, is to continue with knight f3. Um, here you continue with g6, and after knight f3, d2, that was the idea. This is a game, I think, in the Zurich 1953 book with this line, I think Tamanov or someone playing it. After bishop g7, e4, take on f1. And here, this is the whole idea. Take here with the knight. And this is the plan. Uh, the knight has its eye on e3. But for all intents and purposes, this looks too fancy and takes so many moves to implement a uh, black can only be better here. After knight e3, knight d7, you can see that black pieces are much easier to place after castles, queen a5, bishop d2, and this is a typical plan in the bank of queen a6, taking advantage of this diagonal. And after queen c2, knight e5 and you can now see the value of having this queen here and control of these light squares the rook is going to come to b8 
uh, the knight is going to go to d3, the pawn pet sometimes goes to c4, and white is going to be under a lot of pressure again. So not the greatest of moves. So after d6, one of the main ideas is to play g3 and start a kingside fianchetto. Here black plays g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, knight f3, uh, knight d7. And you can see that the plans are fairly similar for black where he places his pieces after rook a b1, castle short, castle short, queen a5. And this rook a b1 was actually quite a good idea with, because the rook is normally not so well placed on a1. And here at least a lot of combinations are not possible. So after rook a b1, castle short for black and castle short for white, queen a5. Um, queen c2, rook to b8. Black is setting up the ideal structure after bishop g2, knight g4. He's coming to this e5 square. h3, knight e5, take on e5. And now black, white can play b3. And it's a typical Benko position with the usual themes. White will play on the queen side. End games usually favor black here. And yeah, it's a game. And going back to the seventh move after d6, another continuation which is quite popular is e4. And now here, this is where most of Benko positions come from after take take g6 knight to f3 and bishop g7 and again you've got the typical uh, Benko setup you castle short you play knight b d7 queen a5 you bring the rook to b8 and here white has got two plans you can play g3 king g2 and bring the rook to the center to play e5. Another one is to play h3, king g1, king h2, bring the rook to the center. In either case, I believe that um, that I believe that uh, black gets a good playable position. So overall, you get the idea of what the opening is about. It's fairly rich opening with a fair, a fair number of positions which are playable, and you can play it either color. It's really one of those uh, openings where whoever has done a bit of homework will be better placed. So I think the best would be then to follow up with this, um, some typical games in the bank. If I get some time, I'll create a video on some typical games in the bank. Okay, I hope this gives you an idea at least so that when you play the themed tournament, you've got at least somewhere to start. Thank you for watching. Um, See you next time.